Hi guys, and welcome back to another Masterclass tutorial. Today, we are going over Lens Blur, a tool that lets you create a professional blur effect by allowing you to customize the plane of focus as well as the depth of field in your photo just using Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. So firstly, what is Lens Blur? Well, Lens Blur is a brand new early access tool that allows you to customize and change the depth of field and the plane of focus with inside your photo. Now, this is a brand new tool, so if you don't see it available or it just doesn't seem to be appearing inside your Lightroom Classic, make sure to go ahead and update it to the latest version. It needs to be at least 13.0 to follow along with this video. In today's video, we're actually using version 13.0.1. Now also another thing to mention is it's still an early access tool. So there are still a few glitches, a few things wrong with it, but you can still create professional results with this new tool. Now we're going over everything that you need to know to get started so you guys can add it to your editing workflow. So let's go ahead and jump onto Lightroom Classic and start using Lens Blur. Right guys, so the very first thing you want to do is go ahead and just load up Lightroom Classic. Now I've gone ahead and chosen this photo here. So I'm gonna go over to the develop panel on the right hand side. Then I'm gonna drop down in between where you can see it says transform and effects we have got lens blur so i'm going to go ahead and open up that panel now at the moment everything is grayed out that's because we haven't actually applied this effect to the photo yet so what i'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and simply click apply now as you can see that's done it in no time at all but do bear in mind this may take several seconds up to several minutes depending on the speed of your computer as well as how complex your photo is because i'm working on a brand new mac studio i think it's the m1 ultra it's very very fast so it may take 10 to 20 seconds depending on the speed of your computer and obviously how complex the photo is. Now once you've got it activated, you can see that you've actually applied blur automatically. And what we can do with these sliders is start to play around with it and get a better, more refined look. So the first one we've got here is your blur amount. Now this isn't to do with your foreground or background blur, this is just to do with the power of that blur. So we're not changing the depth of field or anything like that, we're just literally controlling the power of that. And what we can do is increase the amount of blur by simply increasing that number or decrease the amount of blur. Now, I wouldn't recommend going any larger than 50. I find it starts to make it look quite unrealistic. So what I'd do is I'd probably reduce it down in this tutorial to around about 35. That seems to get a nice realistic look. Now underneath that, you've got your Bokeh control. You've got five different options here, which we'll go over in a second, as well with a boost slider. Now, because there is no Bokeh in this photo, we won't be able to apply it. So if you are interested in how you can use the Bokeh effects, go ahead and skip to the timestamp you can see here where we're using it in photo two. Now underneath that, you've got your focus range. And this is kind of the crux of what the lens blur tool actually does. How it works versus other lens blur features that you might find in Photoshop or other softwares is it creates a depth map and then it applies blur according to how close or how far it is away from the plane of focus. And we can control both the depth of field as well as the plane of focus in this lens blur effect. So what we can do is you can see we've got our focus range here. The best way to describe it is just basically go down to the bottom here and click on visualize depth. Now as you can see, it's now got this kind of temperature color laid over the photo. So what's very close to your plane of focus is this kind of yellowish color. The further you go away, you get this orange color, then the background is predominantly this very dark blue all the way to black. And you kind of visually see this on this graph here. Now, we can actually control that by simply going to this slider here and moving it left and right. In doing so, you are changing that plane of focus. So for example, if we wanted all the information focused on the background, we could do that. So what I'll do is I'll turn off visualize depth so you can see that. So now the foreground is actually blurry. So with this slider, we can change where the focus is on your photo. So for example, we wanted it on the background, or we wanted it on the foreground, we could move it around. Now you've also got these two buttons here that allow you to change that as well. So this button here is your subject selection. So again, we've got a nice subject in the foreground here, so we can click on that to actually focus on that subject, which is nice, quick and easy. And then next to that, we've got our target selection. And this is better when we're working on landscape photography. So for example, if you're focusing on maybe a rock in the foreground, you want everything else to be basically blurred in the background, you could focus on that rock, or you could focus on the sky or anything like that 
Basically, you just target what you want in focus and Lightroom will change it accordingly. Now you can actually change the depth of field by again going to this slider and you've got these little anchor points on the left and right. What we can do is actually move these around. So to create a very shallow depth of field to replicate maybe a lens of f1.2 or f1.4, we could narrow that all the way. Then we want to find that where that basically that subject is. So for example, if we, again, if we have a look at that depth map here, we want to go for this kind of orangey color. So we would probably go for about there. Again, having it subject, or what we can do is simply go to that target icon and simply target the eyes. So again, we've widened it ever so slightly, but again, what we can do is go in, we can refine it to get the exact result that you are after. So what we can do is actually have the dress in the foreground blurry, the background blurry, and just have that subject. Again, just refining it, making it smaller, making it larger. Again, it may take some time. Again, it's a little bit glitchy, as you can see, again, because it is an early access. But what we can do is actually go ahead and zoom in. You can see that we've actually got the faces in nice and focus. But if we go ahead to down here, this is now all blurry which wasn't originally blurry in the original photo there. Now, with our depth map, you might find that Lightroom Classic hasn't got it perfect. It hasn't got it right. As you can see, if we go ahead and zoom in, you can see that this section here isn't the foreground. It's part of the actual headdress. And we actually want that in focus. So how can we change and refine the depth map actually in Lightroom Classic. Well, we can do that using a brush tool. So, so underneath our focus range, we've got a focus and blur button. If we go ahead and click the focus button, it will come up with what is basically a brush tool. So what we'll do is I'll reduce the size of that brush. Uh, we can reduce the amount and the size according. So probably increase, decrease that feather slightly. And what we can do is actually paint back in areas that you want to be in focus. So for example, I need this part to be back in focus again. So you can see that color is changing where is what's in focus. So I'll probably paint that in a little bit more. Go around, paint the edges. Now you can spend as much time as you like on this part of the, uh, because you, what you want is to be as precise as possible, because this will end up making it look realistically as good as possible. Now, if you've made a mistake, don't worry, because what you can do, instead of going focus, you can go over to the blur section, and basically it's removing that part. So we'll go ahead and remove this section here. We don't want this to be, we want this to be the actual background here. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. And you can refine it, try and get the best results you can. Okay, what I recommend doing is zooming out, zooming into another part of the photo. We can see this part of the headdress is actually out of focus. So what I recommend doing is going to your focus button, probably change the size of our brush to quite small. And we'll go ahead and paint that in. So it's now part of the foreground. Now you want it to match that color. So what I recommend doing is going to the amount slider, increasing that. And you can see we're now starting to change that color and you want it to match the same color as the headdress because obviously it's the same part. So what we'll do is we'll increase that like so. And again, we'll do the same with this little feather here. Now this part is what Lightroom Classic has technically got wrong. Now I'm sure this is the part that will get better over time once it's released out of early access and more part of the actually normal part of Lightroom Classic. This is the part that will probably end up being uh, quite good. But again, it takes a little bit of refining to get it absolutely perfect. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and zoom out. Now I'm not gonna spend too much longer on that, but you could see you could go around, making sure all of the hair is correct and around, around here as well. Uh, again, you could spend as much time as you can, like I would probably, this section here needs to be uh, zoomed out. But just for the, to keep this tutorial nice and short, what you want to do is you want to refine it by going to focus, going to blur, changing the size and get it right accordingly. Now we go ahead and turn off visualize depth. Now what we're going to do is have an overall better result with our photo. So you can see now that if we go around here, again, it's not absolutely perfect, but you could spend a lot of time getting it perfectly refined, making sure everything is nice and focused. Obviously we are majorly zoomed in, so you can see there is a little bit of uh, problems, but again, like I was saying, you could refine it and get it absolutely perfect. So you can see we can control the plane of focus by moving it left and right, as well as the depth of field by making it wider or narrower. And you can create effects made on a, maybe an f1.2 lens or an f1.4 lens, something like that, or you can increase that depth of field to maybe f4.5, f6.3, something like that, and it's completely up to you. Now we can also create bokeh as well, but you will need a light source. So let's go ahead and move away from photo one. Let's go over to photo two, which is a beautiful photo of a city landscape. And what I want to do is actually 
you can see back the background here, I want to turn all of these lights and basically create a shallow depth of field effect, mostly focusing on the rail that you can see in the foreground here. So what I'm gonna do is go go ahead and activate lens blur by going to my lens blur panel, and I'm gonna go simply go ahead and click apply. Now what I wanna do is create a very shallow depth of field. So we can see if we go ahead and click on our visualize depth, we wanna focus predominantly on the front rail here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna narrow the actual depth of field by focusing on the mid part of that rail. So I kind of want to focus in the middle part here, this kind of orangey color here. We can do that by either going subject select or actually I'm gonna go ahead and click on our target icon. I'm gonna click bang smack in the middle and you can see that's the part of the photo that we're going to have in focus and everything else is going to be out of focus, predominantly the background we can see here. So I'm gonna do is turn off visualize depth and as you can see now, the background is nice and out of focus and this is what I mean by bokka, these kind of round, very, soft circles and we can actually control that bokeh inside the lens blur panel and we've got five different options. So the first option here is just called circular. It kind of replicates normal modern lenses. Next up we've got this one here which is actually called bubble and what it does is if we go ahead and zoom in you can see it creates these very strong very circular lines and basically it over emphasizes the kind of circle aberration that you can see on some macro lenses and it's a fairly interesting effect. Next here, we've actually got the five bladed aperture. Now this one here kind of replicates older vintage lenses, maybe from the 1960s and 1970s, where it's only got a few aperture blades. In this case, five we can see here. Next on here, we've got ring. Now this kind of replicates slightly older lenses, maybe from the 80s and 90s, maybe SLR film lenses, something like that. And then the last one here, we've got cat's eyes, which creates these kind of very strong kind of cat's eyes ones, they're not perfectly circular, and they kind of replicate more cinema lenses. Now underneath that, you've got your boost slider. So actually, which one am I gonna select? I'm gonna go ahead and select just the normal one here. And what I might do is actually increase the amount so you can really see what the bokeh looks like. So we'll go ahead and just increase it like so. Now the boost slider is actually a bit of a misnomer. It shouldn't really be named boost because what it does is it actually controls the brightness of that bokeh. So if we decrease the brightness, you can see the bokeh is getting quite dark. And if we increase the bokeh, we can see that it's actually brightening up, especially in the background there. So it, although it's called boost, it probably should be called brightness maybe. Yeah, it can control the brightness and the amount of bokeh that you can find in your image. And again, you can control the depth of field by going to our range here, and again, in decreasing or increasing that like so. I'll probably make it very shallow to really emphasize the bokeh. And you can see we've created this really, really cool effect. So as you can see, we can control the bokeh by choosing each five, as well as the kind of brightness of that bokeh. And obviously the blur amount will control the overall blur in the photo, which obviously replicates that bokeh effect. So we can go all the way to 100 to make it very, very strong in this image. And again, if you do need to, because in this particular case, we can see at the bottom here, this is majorly, this doesn't look right at all. So what I would do is I go to our visualize depth here and I'd spend a little bit of time making sure that the actual depth map is right because that's what's gonna create a realistic look. So I'd probably go into our focus here. I'd probably make it a little bit smaller maybe go to the amount, drop that down slightly. And again, I'd paint that back in, making sure that it matches up with the overall surrounding color. And there we go. It is a pretty simple, but really cool panel that lets you create awesome effects to replicate different types of lenses, as well as different types of apertures, as well as you can control your plane of focus, which is something brand new to Lightroom Classic. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So there is my masterclass tutorial all about the lens blur panel, and I highly recommend adding it to your editing workflow. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about Lightroom Classic, this is episode 10 in my masterclass Lightroom playlist, where we go over everything that you need to know about Lightroom, from calibration to color grading, all the way to masking. So if you would like to learn more about Lightroom, make sure to go to the playlist in the link in the description. That is a great resource for you. And of course, don't forget to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe as we'll be making new Lightroom Classic videos as well as Photoshop and photography videos every single week. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.